Our party. In the red corner, representing Nigeria, Omul Dolapo Joshua. So up next, we move into the men's 57 kilogram division. And remember, in the men's tournament, only the gold will be good enough to secure that berth for Paris. Marpo Moli, the 24-year-old from Lagos, undefeated in the professional ranks, and he and has been sensational so far. Ethiopia. Ahead of this Later. fifth bout Maria of the tournament. Yadesa. His opponent, having received opponent, is Akramariam Yadessa later of Ethiopia. Comes to the ring as the reigning three time national champion of Ethiopia. Plenty of support up in the stands from a man who's a member of a six strong Ethiopian boxing team. Four men and two women. We've got judges from Japan, Ukraine, Lithuania, Kazakhstan, and Australia scoring this one using the 10 point must system. Well, there is the power punching, slick boxing, Delapo Amole of Nigeria. You see that RSC against Try Again Morning Ndevelo of Namibia. That was a single shot left hook to take out the man from Namibia at the 1 minute 40 the mark. The for this bout is from Poland. I'm Yet excited the about opening this round. Akram Miriam later. Unanimous points Judges decision victories. Japan, Ukraine, over boxes Lithuania, Kazakhstan, Algeria and Australia. And M Mozambique to book his place here in the gold medal bout. Don't blink. So we're underway then. Boxers with contrasting approaches. Round one. Contesting this gold medal bout at 57 kilograms. Remember, as well as top spot on the podium, an Olympic quota up for grabs in the finals of each of the seven men's weight categories. The boxer wearing red, looking for an overhand right, is Delapo Amoli. Power punching, professional boxer, nine wins out of nine in the professional ranks, nine knockouts, including four in the first round. Last bout in the pro ranks was in June of this year in Lagos, where all of his contests have taken place. The man in blue, a terrific speedster. Kramerium later from Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. Nice left jab from Amoli. Contrasting approach is going to be evident. That right hand from Amoli wasn't too far away. Heads came together as Letta wrapped him up on the inside. And he was reluctant to let go because I said the right hand wasn't too far away. Maybe he felt the breeze or a glance of it. And if to think, my goodness, I've got to get myself set to avoid these punches and if they come in my direction will brace myself to take them but you see Letta he's keen to clinch on the inside so he doesn't get touched up by the heavy hands of Amoli to his body I think I'd be keen to oh Letta so committed to his offense he was almost run onto a right hand lost his balance there again right hand to the top of the head from Amoli and Letta a shot slipping off his forehead keen to clinch but then looking to punch his way out roundhouse right from Letta wasn't too far away Letta's got to be really careful here that he doesn't rush in and walk onto a punch so Mole looking for that left right combination once again but we've already pointed out that Letta possesses terrific speed not just with his hands and feet but reflexes as well to keep his head out of harm's way as a defensive, ta defensive tactic. Mole just demonstrating that pro style, looking for that right hand once again, but it was long by some distance. And Letta, because he is one of those twitchy, fast twitch fiber fighters, his punch is often coming bunches. And if he doesn't find the range, then oftentimes the boxers fall into a clinch right on cue. That's what happens. If the initial sh shot doesn't land, look at Amoli demonstrating to the ref that he's not the man holding, trying to get his hands free. And a wry smile on the face of the referees. If they listen, I've told you guys previously, this isn't grappling. Again, there's Amoli. So com so is Letter. So committed to the attacks. When he doesn't find a range, invariably finds himself chest to chest with his opponents and it can become quite untidy. 
yeah, I think Amoli's just struggling a little bit just to, to find his range with Letter just because he just he punches and he dives in straight away. It's very hard to time a boxer like that. Amoli was looking for his vaunted right hand right from the opening bell, but he was long with it more often than not. That's where Letter got himself in a little bit of a tangle. Letter landing a good right hand, which caused Amoli to lose his balance near the ropes. So, a 3-2 split in favour of Amoli during a frenetic first round. Judge 1 and 4 from Japan and Kazakhstan preferring the work of Letter. Very close. Feels even closer than the score. <laughs> So, into the second round we go. What is the fifth bout of the tournament? For both of these boxers, right hand not too far away, followed it with the left hook, and that's the combination that he used to send Alan, Alain Sange of Cameroon to the canvas yesterday. Sange finished the contest, lost on a unanimous verdict. But again, Mole. Very explosive power punch up with both hands. Here he's adopting a back foot posture, looking to lure in. Oh, now that was a shot that landed with the bicep. Show, so long was Letter with it. The fist went flying over the left shoulder of a mole, and it was the bicep that made contact with the Nigerian boxer. Well, he's going to have to let that jab go to help him find his range, to put him in position for all those power shots. And again, I think Letta has the edge in speed here. So how will Amoli look to counter that speed? Timing, of course, be can beat speed in a boxing ring, but speed is such a valuable commodity. Left hook, left hook right hand from Amoli, not too far away. I think Amoli, for what it's worth, his coaches will have given him the tactics, but I think he's likely to have far more success by trying to hold his feet and be a boxer fighter rather than on the back foot trying to lure in and play counter puncher against Letta. If Letta has that edge in speed, will Amoli be able to counter that blistering speed? It would require exquisite timing in order to do so off the back foot. Yeah, definitely. He needs to be... Again, very unt... Oh, oh. Now, that is a nasty-looking tumble to the canvas because Amoli's right knee buckled beneath him. Thankfully, appears to be okay, but this is a really untidy contest. And again, no criticism or shade intended, but this is tends to be characteristic of Letter's contest because he is so committed to the attacks when he lets those bunches of punches go in the event that they don't find a range it tends to be a chest-to-chest, -chest, shoulder to shoulder encounter that ensues after the punches are off the mark. Right on cue, same thing happening again. It's very, Letter's very quick when he goes to counter, and when he counters, he doesn't normally counter with just one shot. It's a huge combination. Right hand was a scoring shot from Amoli during that coming together. Letter getting it on the front foot now as a 10-second clapper sounds. Amoli using the space of the boxing ring. Nice left hook, check left hook from Amoli, who was able to land without reply. Now that could have well turned the round in his favor. That was a very physical second round indeed. Lots of grappling and entangling over the course of the three minutes. Remember, this man took a two-judge share of the round for judges two and four in the first. How will the second round be scored in what was, again, a very frenetic physical three minutes of boxing yeah it really was I think Letter's just trying to get under Amoli's skin a little bit you know he's, he's pushing his pushing his face up with his glove he's grabbing him he's throwing him around so what scores returned from the judges this time Amoli taking it four scores to one so he leads 20 points to 18 excuse me 20 points to 18 for two of the judges three tied scores at 19 points apiece so even though he took the second round 4-1 this man out of the red corner the distribution of the scores means that he's leading 20-18 two judges the other three scores 
and 19 points apiece. The man in blue needs to convince the three judges who have it 19-19 that he's going to that he he'll, he takes this final round. Amole only needs to convince one of them. So it's all come down to the final three minutes. Letta, you saw him when he was when he goes back to his corner. He's always looking up into the stands to receive the live scores from his compatriots in attendance here at the Dakar Arena. He knows that he's only got it square for three of the five judges and he's trailing 2018 for the other two. This is the first time I've seen him only box on his back foot and try something different. He knows how close this is. He doesn't want to take any chances. So he's keeping, keeping away and I think he's going to try to pot shot for this round. And his pot shots counter the blistering speed of Letta but you see Letta short with a double right hand that he attempted. Because remember... Mole needs to convince one of those three judges who have it at 19-19 that he's taken a round in order to prevail on a 3-2 split. Nice right hand from Letter, his best shot of the entire contest. Mole just got to ensure that his punch has come back to the on-guard position more directly, using a beautiful jab and maintaining the gap between himself and his opponent. Nice right hand again from Letter looks as though when he reduces the number of punches that he throws he has more accuracy letter because when he throws them in those blisteringly quick combinations the proportion of punches landed is pretty low but when he's been firing the single right cross in this third round there it was a double right hand and the second one got through so by reducing the number of punches letter appears to be having more success from my perspective when he lowers his punch output is doing a really good job here of cutting the ring off not letting Amoli get away so less than a minute remaining Letter has had success with his right cross but Amoli's left jab has been impressive remember three scores of 19 points apiece two scores of 2018 in favour of the Lapo Amole. that is a stern talking to in the direction of Letter from the referee he won't want to pick up a point deduction neither will a moly for that matter closing seconds of the contest letter hurtling after his man trying to close the gap and land leather on something nice spin off the line from a mole looking to maintain the gap letter continuing his charge quickening his feet but hasn't been able to get into punching range and a right hand he attempted long landing with the bicep it's another physical entanglement to conclude that third and final round and i don't think letter has done enough but again it's all going to depend on how the judges see it i think letter is going to come out on the wrong end of the verdict from his perspective here and it will be delapo amole who will have his hand raised as the victor Remember, we had three scorecards of 19 points apiece after the first round was 3-2 in favor of Amole. The second round was 4-1 in favor of Amole, but the scores were distributed as such that this man led 2018 on two scorecards. The other three were 19 points apiece. So the scoring of this round are going to be absolutely crucial. I think the man in red has done enough. I do too. it be a count back ladies and gentlemen the results of this bout the winner by split decision in the red corner and there is confirmation Joshua the Lapo Amole of Nigeria has secured a quota place for the 2024 Olympic Games next year a 3-2 split decision victor at the end of a very physical and tidy encounter against the blazing speedster Ikramariam Letter of Ethiopia. Terrific victory for the undefeated man from the professional ranks. And that is five wins out of five in a weight class where 29 boxers entered the draw. The Lapo Amole from Lagos has secured that quota place for Paris next year and that is a terrific performance for a man 
He was a comes in comes in as the African Continental bronze medalist, but was in the professional ring as recently of June of this year. That's what it means to him. He's on his way to Paris for the West African nation of Nigeria. His coaches rightfully are delighted as well because they issued their man with very good instructions. Yeah, they, they really did. And while they did really well to keep his cool there, he was, up, he was really up against it. So look at that letter taking the third round on a 3-2 split. But as we said, Nicola, it depended on the distribution of the scores. So by the narrowest of margins on a 3-2 split, judge number five giving all three rounds to Amole. But that's how close that physical frenetic affair was. It really was. Men, 71 kilograms.